everyone. This is the uh, first installment of the Amateur Astronomy 101 uh, video series that I'm putting together. Uh, it's basically a video series aimed at uh, beginning amateur astronomers or maybe those of you who might be thinking about getting into the hobby. Uh, before I go any further, a quick update on uh, Asteroid 2012 DA14. Uh, it is currently on its way out of here right now. Um, earlier today, it came within, I believe, 17,500 miles of the uh, Earth's surface and peaked at around magnitude 7 or 8. Uh, those uh, stargazers that are, were in uh, Western Europe, Asia, and Australia got a really good view of it. Um, unfortunately, those of us on the uh, North American continent, we did not get to have a good view of it. By the time uh, darkness fell on the East Coast, uh, it was already already making its way um, away from us, and it had uh, dimmed down to around magnitude 12. Um, I did try to image it earlier tonight. Unfortunately, um, I was not successful. And by the time I got home from work and got all my equipment set up, it had uh, dimmed down to about magnitude 13. So that's uh, very, very dim. Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, get any useful data. But um, sometimes it's just the way the, uh, the cards are dealt. When it comes to observing the universe, you have to do it on the universe's terms. But So that's that. Um, but with here, within a few weeks, uh, we should start to get some, uh, some views of comet pan stars. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you're thinking, you know, about buying a telescope, you know, maybe you've looked online, you've read some astronomy articles, maybe you've been to some astronomy forums, and uh, you may have come across some terms like uh, aperture, focal length, focal ratio, uh, magnification. Um, those are good terms to know, especially when you're you're looking to to buy your first telescope. And that's basically what we're going to do in this video, is kind of go over those terms and hopefully give you a, uh, a better understanding of uh, what they mean. So uh, we'll take a look at aperture, we'll take a look at uh, what focal length is, and focal ratio, as well as magnification. And uh, we'll kind of give you an idea of how those, uh, those terms play into uh, using a telescope. So first off, we'll, uh, we'll quickly talk about uh, aperture. Okay, so for our first term, we're going to talk about aperture, and uh, basically aperture, all it is is just the uh, the diameter of the primary objective. And of course, if you're talking about a Newtonian reflector like this one, the uh, primary objective is, of course, the uh, primary mirror. Uh, if you're talking about a, a refractor, it's going to be the the primary lens on the front. Now, the aperture does not mean the distance between this end of the tube and this end. Um, if I were to measure this distance, it would actually be larger than 10 inches. Um, what we're talking about when we say aperture is the diameter of the uh, primary objective, in which case uh, in this telescope, the uh, diameter of the primary objective is 10 inches. Um, this one here, my Smith Cassegrain, um, the primary mirror on the back is 11 inches. Um, so don't get that confused. Uh, it's, like I said, it's not the, uh, the diameter of the opening of the tube. It's usually uh, slightly larger than the mirror. Um, there's a, usually about a half inch gap between the, uh, the side of the tube wall and the uh, edge of the mirror. Um, simply it's just the, uh, the diameter, how many inches across the uh, primary objective is. And of course with telescopes, when it comes to aperture, um, aperture is king. Um, the bigger your aperture, the more you're going to see. Uh, there's no other way to put it, simply put. The bigger the aperture, the more you're going to see. Alright, so next we're going to talk about uh, focal length. And focal length is basically just the, uh, the distance that the light covers from uh, the primary objective to a point to where the light comes to a focus. And, um, in this particular telescope, the light enters 
bounces off the uh, the primary mirror down there. Uh, the distance from the primary mirror to the secondary, and then out to the focuser. That is your focal length. In which this case, this telescope has a 1,200 millimeter focal length, and usually you'll see uh, focal lengths expressed in millimeters. Um, same thing with your Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, this one has a 2,800 millimeter focal length. Uh, the light enters, it bounces off the primary mirror in the back, and from the point where it bounces from the primary up to the, uh, the secondary, and back down again through the tube to the visual back, and uh, of course to the eyepiece, that is your focal length. Um, and basically your focal length is going to determine how much magnification an eyepiece is going to give you. Um, and I'll go more into that here in a minute. But uh, that's pretty much all focal length is. Um, and I will tell you that uh, if you look at this telescope, you know, it has a pretty long tube, and if you look at this one, the tube's quite short. However, the light path, the focal length of this one, is actually longer than the, uh, the focal length of this particular telescope. So this one is a 1200 millimeter focal length. This one is a 2800. And the reason why is because the light bounces around inside of a Schmidt Cassegrain uh, more than it does in a uh, Newtonian reflector. And so uh, your, your focal length is longer because the light has to travel further uh, to get to that uh, focal point. And um, of course in, in a refractor uh, it's pretty much the same. The light enters the, the objective lens in the front, travels down the tube uh, to where the focuser is, and uh, comes to the focus point. And that's your focal length. Okay, so we've covered aperture, focal length, now we're going to talk about magnification. Um, what I have here is a, a regular 20 millimeter fossil eyepiece. Um, some, you know, if you're just if you're th just starting out, you may think, well, if I have a 20 millimeter eyepiece, it's going to give me uh, a certain power, a certain magnification, uh, no matter what telescope I use it on. Well, that's true, but it's not going to be the same. Um, basically, your focal length is going to determine how much uh, magnification uh, you get from from your eyepiece. Um, and basically, the way you determine your magnification is you take the focal length of your telescope, which in this case for this 10-inch uh, reflector is uh, 1,200 millimeters. And then you divide that by the focal length of the eyepiece. Uh, and that's usually written on the eyepiece. You know, it'll say, you know, 32 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 9, 6, or what have you. So uh, you divide that, and, um, and that's how you get your magnification. In which case, for this telescope, at 1200 millimeters focal length divided by the 20 millimeters focal length of this uh, eyepiece that will give you a magnification of 60 times. Um, now if you use the same eyepiece in this telescope which has a 2800 millimeter uh, focal length you divide 2800 millimeters by 20 and you get 140. So well, you can see that if you use this eyepiece with this telescope you're going to get over uh, twice the amount of magnification that you would if you were to use it in this one. And uh, that's also uh, goes into um, related with uh, focal ratio, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, so definitely remember that uh, your focal length is going to determine what type of ma magnification you're going to get um, when it comes to using eyepieces. Alright, so we've talked about uh, aperture, we've talked about focal length and magnification, and now we're going to talk about focal ratio. And basically, focal ratio is just uh, it's basically the relationship between the uh, telescope's focal length and the aperture. Um, and to get your focal ratio, all you do is divide the focal length by the aperture in millimeters, and that'll give you your F number. In this case of the Smith Cassegrain, we have a focal length of 2800 millimeters. We divide that by 279 millimeters for the aperture, and we come out to around f10. Now, what does uh, focal ratio mean to you? How does it matter? Well, this scope, as I said, is f10. Well, this reflector down here is f4.7. Uh, 
basically you know dividing 1200 by the the aperture uh, whatever 10 inches is in, in millimeters I'm not going to do the math but uh, it comes out to 4.7 um, and if you remember when we were talking about focal length uh, with this eyepiece we use the eyepiece and the telescope with the uh, the uh, the smaller or the, the lower focal length we get a um, a lower magnification as where when we use that same eyepiece in this telescope we get a, a higher magnification well that's basically uh, where your focal ratio comes in with the telescopes with a, a lower focal ratio which we say you know has faster optics um, you're going to get a lower magnification with your eyepieces and a wider field of view in the case of the faster or sorry the uh, the slower telescopes which we call telescopes with a, uh, a higher uh, focal ratio you're going to get you know higher magnification with a given eyepiece and your field of view is going to be smaller um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind um, when you decide on your telescope you know do you want wide you know big wide field views at lower magnification or do you want to get close and uh, uh, bring in that higher power a higher magnification but with the smaller field of view um, and we'll do a little demonstration here in a minute to show you um, basically a demonstration on what focal ratio is uh, it won't be a hundred percent scientifically accurate but it will get the point across um, as far as uh, focal ratio the general idea All right. So for our, uh, our demonstration of focal ratio, focal length, um, so this is very unscientific and quite ridiculous, actually. I'm using toilet paper tubes to represent our telescopes. Yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? Um, basically, what we're going to do, we're going to pretend that this particular tube, the short one, is our um, our lower focal ratio telescope. We'll pretend it's f4, and the longer tube will be our, let's say, f10 to f12. Uh, focal ratio telescope. And on the wall here I've got uh, a planet and some moons hanging around. That'll uh, be in our field of view. So we want to go out one night and we want to take a look at the planets and so we're going to use our, our uh, F4 telescope. Take a peek. And so we get the planet in the field of view. We focus and here we go. We can definitely see the planet and we can also see all the moons around it. It's a very nice view. Now if we swap out telescopes, we go to our, say our Smith Cassegrain, which has a you know, focal ratio of F10. We look at the same planet. Well now we can only see the planet itself. We can no longer see the moons around it. And that's basically um, a good demonstration of, of what focal ratio is. Of course, it's it's definitely not 100% accurate. There's a lot more going on there uh, than just a length of cardboard tubing, but uh, it gets the point across uh, so that you know that with the higher focal ratio telescopes, your field of view is going to be um, a lot smaller than it would be for a, a faster telescope with a lower focal ratio. And it all has to do with magnification. Uh, basically, with a, a telescope like this, with a really long focal length, um, your magnification will always be high, which means your field of view will always be low, and vice versa with the uh, with the lower focal ratio, faster telescopes, um, you're going to have a lower magnification, which means your field of view is going to be much wider. All right, so that about does it for this video. Um, I hope I've explained everything as clearly as I can. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to message me, um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe. Clear skies.